Hey everyone, the announcement of yet another Social Security cost of living adjustment that was below 2% ignited the same conversation and questions as it does every time. In the comments of my videos, my Facebook group, and on my website, I see lots of people who say things like, well, my expenses have increased a lot more than this cost of living adjustment, or the one I hear a lot and the subject of today's video, there has to be a better way to measure the increases to living expenses than the way it's being done now. So today I want to cover the proposal that I think you'll hear the most about in the days ahead. But before we jump into that, if you're new here, be sure to subscribe and hit that notifications bell. There will be changes to Social Security in the days ahead. And when those changes start to surface, I'll cover them right here. So if you're subscribed and have those notifications turned on, you'll be one of the first to know. Also, be sure get a copy of my Social Security Cheat Sheet. This is where I've taken the most important rules and numbers from the massive Social Security website and condensed it down to just one easy to read page. And if you get this year's version, I'll automatically send you the new ones when I update them every year. There's a link in the description where you can get yours and it is free. So currently, Social Security benefits are automatically adjusted every year if a certain measurement of inflation increases. The measurement they use is the CPIW, which stands for the Consumer Price Index, for urban wage earners and clerical workers. Now, this inflation gauge is compiled and published by the United States Bureau of Labor Statistics. And although they release this on a monthly basis, the Social Security Administration only uses the data for the third quarter. So that's for the months of July, August, and September. Now, to get the increase, you simply add up the sum of the index for the prior year's third quarter and compare to the sum of the third quarter index of the current year. Then you just calculate the difference between the two numbers. And if it's positive, you have an increase to Social Security benefits. But if there's no increase in the CPIW, there is no cost of living adjustment for the year. But your benefits don't decrease. So it's really pretty simple. But there are some who say that using the CPIW as the measurement method is not accurate because retirees spend their money very differently than individuals who are not retired. So for example, retirees spend more on health care and housing and less on gasoline, education, and consumer electronics. As a fix for this, it has been widely suggested that the Social Security Administration should discontinue basing the annual cost of living adjustments on the CPIW, and instead start using a measurement known as the CPIE. Now this version of the CPI is meant to track the expenses for Americans who are 62 years of age and older. Now both of these indexes measure the same categories of goods and services. They just have different weightings to the category. So for example, the CPIE factors in around 11% of its index to healthcare costs, and the CPIW only counts 5.6% of the overall index as healthcare expenses. Since statistically, seniors spend more of their money on healthcare, an index that assigns a higher weighting should be more accurate to the way they spend money and experience inflation. So before we move on, let's take just a second and look at a side-by-side -side comparison of the differences in weightings between the CPIW and the CPIE. Now be warned, the print may be somewhat small, but stick with me. And, and I think it'll make sense once we get it all up there. So there are eight big categories that each of these indexes measure. They are housing, transportation, food and beverages, medical care, recreation, education and communication, apparel, and for the stuff that doesn't fit anywhere else, they have other goods and services. So first, we'll illustrate the rough percentages that the CPIW uses in their weightings, and then we can compare the differences with the CPIE. And as you see from this chart, the two big differences are the weightings assigned to housing expense and medical care. But the big question that still remains is, how does this affect the actual cost of living adjustment? Would it result in a larger benefit increase for seniors? Well, we have CPIE data available from back to December of 1982, so we can go back to 1984 and do a year-by-year -year comparison with the CPIW, which is the version that's currently being used. So up first, we have the increases by year from the CPIW. You can see that there were three years where no cost of living adjustment occurred in 2009, 10, and 2015. 
Then we can overlay the increases that would have happened if the CPIE would have been used. Those are the yellow bars. When viewed side by side, you can see that there are some years where the CPIW was ahead. Those are the blue bars. But in most years, the CPIE was slightly higher. And if you average the difference between the two measurements since 1984, the CPIE has been about 0.27% higher per year. Now that doesn't sound like much, but with the effect of compounding, that absolutely adds up over time. So then why aren't we already using the CPIE since it should more accurately represent the expense of retirees? Well, there are a few problems with the measurement method. First, the Bureau of Labor Statistics is very blunt about this being an experimental index. Then to add to that, the Government Accountability Office released a report this year that identified several issues with the potential accuracy of the CPI in general and specifically mentioned the small sample size of the CPIE as a factor. Ultimately, there's no magic formula that works well enough to keep everyone happy. I just know that with the current fiscal challenges that the Social Security system is facing, I wouldn't expect a more generous formula for increasing benefits to be introduced any time soon. But as this conversation continues to develop, I'll be sure to keep you informed right here. So be sure to subscribe if you haven't. Thanks so much for watching.